AB is a tool that I use all the time for photos with any drone for two reasons. The first one is very simple. By using it, I get five photos shot almost at the same time with different exposure values. Therefore, I always have one image perfectly exposed. It is a bit like a free insurance policy, extremely useful. When shooting a lot of photos, maybe during a trip abroad, it might happen to have a few shots wrongly exposed, especially against the sun or in low light. This can be extremely frustrating. The second reason is to extend that dynamic range and get better quality images in certain light conditions, as we will see later on in this video. All DJI prosumer drones have an AEB function, sometimes with three photos, and in most cases with five. In the Mini 3, we access automatic exposure bracketing in the photo video menu. We have a choice between three or five photos. I always select five. The camera takes the shots in rapid succession, within a second. Each image has an exposure interval of two thirds of a stop. The ISO value remains constant, while the shutter speed is modified at each shot. I really like the exposure interface of DJI Fly App, with all the settings available from two tabs of a single window. But there is something very annoying and poorly planned that can be very easily fixed by DJI. The exposure values are stored in memory for each single photo mode. Let's say that I've taken some night shots and now I want to take some photos during the day. So I expose for a single photo. Then I want to take a 48 megapixel one, but the values are still the one for the night shot, so I have to expose again. The same if I want to take bracketed photos. Then I want to take a top-down photo and I need to modify the exposure. If I want to take a single photo, I need to expose again and one more time for a 48 megapixel one. It doesn't make any sense. The exposure should be memorized from the last shot taken for all the different modes, as these are the current light conditions. End of the rant. The five photos taken in AEB can be merged to HDR using some raw processing software like Lightroom or specific programs like Photomatics. I do it with On One Photo Raw, the program I use for raw post processing and for organizing my photos and videos. You will find info about On One Photo Raw in the description, together with a coupon code for a discount on the price. The benefit of merging to HDR is increasing an image's dynamic range. The dynamic range is the difference between the brightest part and the darkest part. A camera has a much lower dynamic range compared to the human eyes. The sensor can reproduce highlights only up to a certain luminosity. After that, the whites will be burnt and impossible to recover. This is shown on the histogram by the bars touching the right edge. The same goes for the shadows. Below a certain point, the sensor will interpret all dark shadows as black. As we can see from the bars bunched up on the left edge of the histogram. This image was taken right after sunrise, on an overcast day. The full sun is in the image, uncovered by the clouds. In the histogram, we notice that there are bars bunched up against both the left and the right edges. This shows that we are in an extreme dynamic range situation. As you can see, if we are supposed to optimize the sun and avoid burning the highlights, the shadows will be way too dark. While if we are supposed for the shadows, we lose the structure of the sky, as the highlights will be burnt beyond repair. The idea behind merging to HDR is to take the shadows from the overexposed images and the highlights from the underexposed ones. By merging the five photos, we obtain an image with highlights and shadows within a range that can be correctly reproduced. Obviously, we want to use RAW files, as they contain a much higher quantity of information. We can further enhance the merged image by color grading, increase mid-tones and shadows, while decreasing the overall exposure, dehaze a bit, increase the saturation, and adjust the white balance. 
As you can see, the result is excellent, much closer to what we see in real life. The sun is perfectly exposed, the structure of the sky outstanding. There is plenty of definition in the elements on the ground, while a good amount of contrast is retained. Thanks to the very wide aperture of the lens, the Mini 3 is able to render shadows very well. Notice that in all the photos shown in this video, I have not used any local adjustments that are very useful to further reduce the dynamic range. But when using merged images, it's not really needed. When shooting directly against the sun with a drone, there are often very nasty flares, chromatic aberrations, and loss of detail and resolution. But the excellent length of the Mini 3 behaves really well. Here is the same scene, taken a few seconds later, with a single 48 megapixel photo. The result is good considering the challenge in light conditions, but nowhere near the merged image. There is an area of overblown highlights just above the sun, some chromatic noise in the shadows, and the structure of the sky cannot match the one of the merged image. Here is one of the 12 megapixel photos used for merging. In my opinion, the edited image is better than the 48 megapixel one, but still, it cannot match the richness of the colors, the structure of the sky, and the details of the merged image. Let me know your opinion in the comments below, and don't forget to hit the like button if you find this video interesting. It really helps to spread the video to more people. I have done an in-depth comparison of the 48 megapixel mode of the Mini 3 versus merged images. I will post a link at the end of this video. Automatic exposure bracketing also works on vertical photos, and the result with merged images is just as good as with regular landscape ones. When using 48 megapixel photos, it is not possible to use AEB. I have tried to do it manually by taking five photos and modifying the shutter speed value in each of them. But there is a lapse of a few seconds between each shot, and the drifting of the drone causes severe ghosting that ruins the resulting image. The image we saw before was an extreme HDR situation. In these cases, merging is without any doubt the way to go. But in drone photography, the sky is very often in the frame, with some degree of high dynamic range. I generally merge the bracketed photos, and in most cases I get better results compared to the single images. From time to time the merged image can have some artifacts, especially with subjects in motion, or with very strong artificial lights. But since we have the five individual shots, if something goes wrong, we can always use one of the single image instead. Let's have a look at a few more. This is again a high dynamic range situation, although not as extreme as the one with the full sun at sunrise. The sun is outside the frame to the left, but the sunlight is reflected by the clouds over Mount Etna. There is a huge difference in luminosity compared to the little village in the foreground, which normally would appear extremely dark. But as you can see, by merging five images, the result is very well balanced. Another high dynamic range image. The sun at sunset is just outside the frame. Mount Etna is having a quiet smoke, reflecting nicely the light from the sun. The lens of the Mini 3 does an excellent job avoiding any flare or chromatic aberration around the sun. The detail in the shadows is excellent. Here we have an interesting structure of the sky, after sunset, with the sun at about 2 o'clock. The street lights in this village by the sea and farther away along the coast add interest and depth to the image. There are also some very dark areas in the vegetation and the sea, but by merging the images, everything is very well balanced again. In this one, there is a huge difference in luminosity between the electric lights in the little village by the sea, the cars in the road above, and the very dark vegetation, with only the very last twilight to act as a fade light. It would be impossible to render properly the highlights and the shadows without merging the photos to HDR. Click on this link to watch my video about 48 megapixel images when I compare them to image merged to HDR. Don't forget to hit the like button if you find this video interesting. Thank you.